Good morning, Miss Brandy, Miss Crystal, Miss Lena. You guys are in the right spot. I'm sure we'll have a few more people jump on here shortly. We got about five minutes before we are going to get started. So make sure you got your cell phone with you. Hopefully you're watching this loom via desktop or laptop so that you can play along with your phone as we go through the class. Uh, but you guys are in the right spot. Look forward to working with you and I will see you in about five minutes to get started. All right, good morning guys, welcome in. So we're gonna go ahead and get started here with our KW Consumer App training. Uh, those of you, I think I know everyone on this call, so I would say those of you that don't know me, because 
and I don't know everyone on the call, but I'm pretty sure I know all of you looking at the participant list there. Just in case, uh, my name is Marty Miller. I am your regional technology trainer for the South Texas region. Uh, I've been with Keller Williams going on seven years now. It's pretty exciting. Uh, I have worked as a, a sales agent in production side. So I've been a buyer's agent, a listing agent, a VP of sales, a VP of expansion. I ran a 15 person team uh, in Katy for several years as well. Uh, I was the productivity coach, if you didn't know, at your market center there at Platinum. Had an excellent time doing that for about 14 months, working with Randy and Karina and Brandy and the entire crew there, David and Tori and Miss Ann, of course. And uh, then had the opportunity as of the first of the year to accept this position as your regional technology trainer. So super excited about that and excited to be with you guys today. Uh, let's talk housekeeping real quick. So you guys are on a Zoom webinar, which is a little bit different than a standard Zoom meeting. Uh, you can see you don't have the old Brady Bunch uh, screen there with all of your cameras. Your cameras are by default turned off and you are muted by default as well. So your cameras will remain off the entire time. Uh, don't have to worry about uh, anything happening in the background or getting up to take a quick break, come back, etc. Uh, you are also muted. So if you do want to have a conversation with me, uh, you'll see if you look down here at the bottom of the screen, there should be three buttons. One of those buttons is raise hand. So if you click on raise hand, uh, I will see that on my side and then I can unmute you. We can have a conversation if you'd like to do that. Uh, we also have a chat button down here at the bottom as well. And you can click on that. A little window will pop up and you can uh, write your comments or chat uh, there as well. So uh, feel free to use one of those two options when we start having discussions and uh, ask you questions. So this is going to be an engaging class and most of that engagement will most likely happen in the chat. Um, and finally, this is being recorded. So if you do have to leave a little early, or if you have team members or colleagues that couldn't make the call and they want you to tell them what it's about, you can actually just send them the link. Uh, I will upload this to YouTube and get the link over to uh, Brandy and David and Randy and the team there, Tori, uh, probably by tomorrow, end of day at the worst, okay? So uh, look forward to that coming over. Let's go ahead and get started. So I want you guys to test out that chat box. So if you'll go ahead and pull up the chat box there at the bottom, you should have a, uh, the ability now to type. And I want you to tell me what kind of app are we discussing today? Type in the chat there. What sort of app are we discussing today? Teresa said, what's up? Good job. All right, Jonathan says the new KW app. All right, Kenny's got it right on the dot. Yes, Diana, pull it up. Now we're talking, right? Consumer app. Guys, I know it's pretty self-explanatory, and yet I've had a lot of questions come up in teaching this class and obviously prior to teaching this class from agents wanting this app to do certain things that it doesn't do. And we have to remember that this is the KW consumer app. It's consumer facing. It was designed for the consumer. So the first two thirds of the class, we're actually going to take off our agent hat. We're going to put our consumer hat on and we're going to talk about how to use the app from the consumer's point of view. Okay, so that's what we're going to do for the first two thirds and the last third will transition to kind of the agent style of business and how we can use KW command to integrate with the new app. So first things first, if you have not gone, let me switch this share real quick and share with you my phone so we can look at the app together. If you have not gone and downloaded the KW consumer app, I do want you to go to the app store and make sure that you download it. It's gonna look like this. So top left-hand corner there, red letters, white background, the KW Consumer app. It'll just say KW on it. When you go to open the app, you will need to make sure that you actually create an account. Okay, so if it's the first time that you're using the app, you'll basically be using the app as a consumer that has not registered. Sorry guys, let me get out of this. I was actually using the app, ironically enough. So. When you actually get into the app the first time, you will need to register for an account. The consumer app does not know that you are a Keller Williams agent and does not care, honestly, that you are a Keller Williams agent either. So if you are going to need to register for an app, for, excuse me, for an account, just like any other consumer would. So you're going to put in your name, you're going to put in your email address, you're going to create a password. That's essentially how we're getting the consumer's information into our command is that they are registering for an account, okay? So number one, make sure that if you haven't already that you have downloaded the app and you have registered for it. Now you will know if you have connected yourself to your app, in this case, right, agent consumer, you as the consumer have an agent connected account 
if you see a headshot name and license number at the top of the screen when you click on the more button in the bottom right. Okay, so let's click on that more button in the bottom right and then you can see. Now, if for any reason your app looks like this, then you do not have a branded version of the app. A branded version of the app is going to have more functions and yet the consumer can't get access to those functions until they have partnered with a Keller Williams agent. So if for any reason yours looks like this or in the future your consumer goes to the app store and downloads a non-branded version, you're gonna walk them through this next process. So in order to find an agent that I want to work with at Keller Williams, I'm gonna click on that find an agent button at the top right hand corner. Now, if I already know my agent's name, that's pretty easy. I can just type it in. However, if I wanna search for agents in the area, I can actually type in Cypress, right? And, or I can use Houston or any one of those areas, right? So let's just do Houston, for example. And I'm gonna get a list of all of the agents that are doing business in Houston, Texas. And you can see, here's a list of them. I don't know who that guy wearing the cowboy hat is. We need to get him out of here. Uh, just kidding, Chad. All right, so you can start seeing all of the agents listed alphabetically by last name that do business in the Houston area. Now, let me take a look at this list right now. I just kind of pause as I was scrolling through. Six amazing agents listed on the screen, right? All doing great business, all amazing Keller Williams agents. That being said, as a consumer of the six agents that are listed on the screen right now as a consumer, which one would you more than likely want to do business with or choose to do business with just out of the six that are listed on the screen? So put in the chat, who would you guess, right? Of those six, you're a consumer, you don't know anything about the six people on the screen. There we go, right? Now we're talking. So everyone's choosing Steven and typically because Steven's headshot is listed. So my first question to you guys is, is your headshot actually updated? Have you gone into command and into connect and updated your marketing profile so that your headshot and more importantly, your bio and all of your information are going to show up? You can easily check that out by searching for yourself. I'm gonna search for my name. There you can see under agents, I've got my headshot showing up because I have a team. My team is showing up, my team logo, the address to the market center and my website. I've got specialties and designations, mobile and office and email, and then my full bio shows up. Okay, this is what I want for each of you. I want you to have a bio written out. If you have a team, your team information is in there, you've got your headshot, everything looks clean because again, we wanna be Steven in that last example. We wanna be the agent that if the consumer doesn't know who we are, has a higher likelihood of choosing us because we're not just a grayed out figure or a KW logo, we actually have our headshot loaded in. So in order to pair this non-branded version of the app to myself as an agent, I would just click on get in touch. And then in the bottom right, you can see I can click on confirm. Okay, once I've done that, you can see success. Marty is now your agent. They will help you find the right home or sell your current one. You connect them with them at any time through the app. I can tap anywhere to, dis to dismiss. Now, if I click on the more button in the bottom right hand corner one more time, you can see I now have the branded version of the app. Uh, Chris, it may be that it's not in uh, KW Connect, so I would check both places. I would check with uh, KW Connect and I would check with Command. Uh, also, you want to make sure that the toggle and Command Use My Marketing Profile has been switched on so that it's showing up in the app as well. Um, if not, you can do some troubleshooting. I'm sure Chad can help you do some troubleshooting. Uh, to get that fixed for you. Uh, Diane, I see you got there. Diana, excuse me. I see you got your hand up here. So real quick, let me promote you there. And then I'm going to allow you to talk. Oh, did it take? Where'd you go? There it goes. All right, uh, Diana, you are unmuted on my side. You can unmute yourself and ask a question. Go ahead. Um, can you hear me? I can, yes ma'am. So the question I was going to ask, where do we go? I mean, I'm, I'm seeing my head and everything, but where do I go to um, change like the logo and stuff like that? So there's two places. You're going to go into command. You're going to click on settings and then KW can, or it's connect settings, I believe is what it says. And underneath that, there's a marketing profile button. You want to click on marketing profile and that's where you can update the information. There's a lot of information being pulled from there. There is some information also being pulled from kwconnect.com. 
So when you go to kdb.connect.com, you'll log in and there is a profile tab there as well. You'll want to make sure that is completely updated as well. Okay. So both of those sections, command marketing profile and KDB Connect's profile as well. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, so now that we have the branded version of the app, uh, hang on real quick. There we go. All right, so now we have the branded version of the app. We want to start with the basics. What are most people going to use a KW Consumer app for? They're going to search for homes. Uh, Diana, since I have you as a panelist, let me ask you this, since you're, you can easily unmute yourself, guys, the rest of you can throw it in the chat. Diana, have you been on vacation in the last 12 months or have vacation plans in the next 12 months in the US? And if so, where are you headed? What are you doing? Um, does it have to be out of the immediate Texas area? Nope, not at all. Okay, yeah, we've been to Brenham, Belleville, and Navasota. Okay, so let me ask you, where did you go in each one of those places? Anywhere fun, restaurant, uh, music hall? Yeah. Yeah, we went to the Classic Rock Coffee Shop. Classic Rock Coffee Shop, and that was in where? That's in Navasota. Okay, so here we go. Classic Rock Coffee Shop. What I did was I actually typed, I clicked on the search bar at the top, and then I'm just going to type in Classic Rock Coffee Shop. Diana, does that look like where the Classic Rock Coffee Shop is? Um, it should be. Probably not. It's in Missouri. So no. let's put uh, anywhere else that you went to? Uh, we went to the um, Washington on the Brazos Park. Okay, so let's do that. Washington on the Brazos. That's a state park there, right? So yeah, I think, well, I think the state is now not controlling it, but it probably still listed as a state park. Does that look like the park right there on the screen? Yes. Right off of the Brazos River? Yes. Did I put in an address, Diana? I'm sorry, what? Did I use an address to search for that? No. Did I put in the city or the state? No. Diana, ever wanted to live near Disneyland or Disney World? No. <laughs> if you did, all you would have to do would be type in something like Disney World. And all of a sudden, now you can see we're zoomed in on Disney World. I can see homes near there. Can what you can Disney you do like a Land. can you do like a Walden on Lake Conroe? Um, let's search for it. Walden on Lake Conroe. That looks like Walden on Lake Conroe? Uh, I assume so. Looks like Lake Conroe there, right? Yes. You wanted to live near the White House? Okay. Yes. We don't have to get too political. And yet, here we go, White House. How about, how cool would it be to be able to see the Statue of Liberty from your balcony? Well, there are the houses that you could buy in order to see it, All right? How often did I put in an address, a city, or state in searching for any one of those? Not once, Say right? Again. So the cool thing is that the KW Consumer app partners with Google. You can see Google's name there at the bottom left-hand corner of our screen, right? So when we are searching in that search box at the very top, if we are not using the actual address, city, or state, then basically Google is going to say, what's the address most likely associated with this search term? And then it's going to zoom the actual app map in on that search term. So just one more example, right? I used to be a general manager for high-end restaurants at Perry's and Papa's Brothers, and I loved going to Silver Oak Winery. I didn't put in the address. I didn't put in the state, the city, right? But it zooms us in on what they most likely believe the address is going to be. So you can search for landmarks. Let's take it back home, right? How many of you went to the rodeo this year? Well, maybe not this year, but at least, you know, well, now it's not actually pulling up. It's giving us, so I can put in, and let's do Houston. We'll actually put the city in, right? So you can see there's Reliant Arena right off of Kirby Drive. Everybody see it? There's Astrodome. If I wanted to see per properties that were available around that area, you could quickly and easily see those properties for sale. So that's item number one, is that you actually have the ability to search for 
landmark items, right? Landmark, I would like to live near X, but I don't know the address of X. And yet if I type in whatever the actual landmark is, it's going to, Google's gonna say, what's most likely the search term they're searching for here and what's the address that we have? And then zoom you in on that actual location. What about neighborhoods? In the, in the chat there, throw in some popular neighborhoods in the Cypress area. Neighborhoods you have listings in, neighborhoods you're doing business in, neighborhoods you live in. Give me some neighborhoods in there. All right, so Diana's got Copperfield. So let me type in Copperfield. Okay, do you see the neighborhoods start to show up at the bottom there? And I can actually click on search, and here I get zoomed in on neighborhoods around Copperfield. All I had to do was zoom in the screen a little bit more, and you can see we've got Copperfield South Down, Copperfield South Creek, South Creek Copperfield, Copperwood Ranch, Copperwood, right? So Town Lake was another one that was used. So I can type in Town Lake and search, and boom, immediately get zoomed in on the Town Lake neighborhood, right? Did I put in a city or state or address at any point? I'm just literally typing in the search term and it is looking for now the neighborhood that is most likely associated with that search term. Let's use Town Lake for the example. So if I wanted to more know, know more about Town Lake, you guys have dealt with these buyers before. I don't know anything about the Cypress area, but I know that Town Lake is supposed to be a really nice neighborhood. They could come into your app. They could search for Town Lake. They could then click on Town Lake and start getting information about the neighborhood itself. So you're gonna see some basic stats. You're gonna get information about what locals say, and that's driven from a company called spatial.ai. It's based upon a variety of factors, but a lot of it's driven upon um, purchases made by people that live in the neighborhood there. And so there, you know we're always tracking what we're buying and selling, things like that. Um, in a second there, I'm gonna tell you how to put in places and you can then determine the commute time. What do they always wanna know? Well, how far is it from that house to work, to school, to the kids' school, to church, to my favorite grocery store? We can add places in shortly and see information there. As I can hear Miss Ann saying it in the back of my head, don't be the source of the information, be the source of the source of the information. Here's the nice thing, how often do they ask you, well, how are the schools? Are the schools good? We don't want to be the source, we want to be the source of the source. So on your KW Consumer app, you can actually see that if they download it, they can get the information about the schools from the actual app. In addition, our app has another partnership. We talked about Google earlier. These neighborhoods are driven by Nextdoor, and within the app, I can see that we have a partnership with Yelp that's going to show me nearby places to that neighborhood. I can see, are there any local restaurants? Are there any local grocery stores, nightlife, cafe, shopping, arts and entertainment, or fitness? And anything that matches those criteria will show up down at the bottom and I can get some more information about, oh, okay, cool. It looks like there's some wine bars and bars and grills. They've even got a breakfast cafe. Oh, there's a Chick-fil-A, I'm done, right? Chick-fil-A and we're good. So you can start scrolling through and see all of that information while you're looking at the neighborhood. Then finally, you can see homes for sale within the neighborhood as well and kind of swipe left and scroll through that. And they can come up to the uh, button at the very top left next to Town Lake, minimize that neighborhood, and then I can go back in and I can start searching for other neighborhoods as well. So there's Heritage, I can see Canyon Lake Village, Berry Center, Danbury Bridge, Ash, you know, Riata Ranch. You guys are familiar with all of these neighborhoods. And we can click on any one of them. Um, Jonathan, if you can't see the name of the neighborhood, you may just need to zoom your map in a little bit so if you're zoomed all the way out, you're not even gonna see neighborhood boundaries because there's just too many, right? Then as I start to zoom in, a lot of times the neighborhood boundaries will start to show up, as you can see, and yet I'm still not seeing neighborhood names. As I continue to zoom in further, then the neighborhood names will start to show up. So you can see there's Black Horse Ranch. Any one of these communities, the consumer can click on and get additional information about each one of those neighborhoods. They can find out, again, more information about the schools, additional places, and then homes for sale. And they can do that for any neighborhood that they are interested in learning more about. I've heard Black Horse Ranch is nice, but maybe that's a little high, right? I can't quite afford that neighborhood. Let me look at the other neighborhoods around it 
and see what the average price point is on each one of those neighborhoods. So it's a great way for the consumer just to start exploring the area. How often do you have people saying, uh, well, we're coming to, we want to move to Cyprus because we heard it's a nice area, but we don't know anything about it. Great. Here's my first recommendation. I'm going to send you a link so you can download my KW Consumer app. And then we're going to get together quickly on a Zoom call. I'm going to spend about 10 minutes with you just showing how you can search by neighborhood, get more information. And then you guys can do exactly what I'm doing right now with your consumer, right? Through a Zoom call, sharing your phone. Okay, so that's the way that they can actually look at neighborhoods. Let's do a, let's just do a standard house search. So maybe I'm looking at this screen. I know that these are the areas that I want to live in, but I want to see what homes in this area fit my criteria. So I can click on price. Let's say I want to be between 300 and I just clicked on that white dot and I'm sliding my thumb to the right and then sliding my thumb to the left. Let's say 300 and 450, somewhere in that price point. Uh, bedrooms, we have twin five-year-olds and little Lily May is due August 19th. So it's got to be at least four bedrooms. Uh, Nacho and Knox would prefer a single family home because they want a backyard. Those are my dogs. I can click on more. Scroll up, you're going to see additional information. Now, if your consumer is looking for a house for lease, they can actually search for those as well by clicking on listing type for sale. And then you'll see just underneath that box is for rent. So I can toggle that on and see lease properties, or I can go back and toggle on for sale and see for sale properties. You can also see the various statuses that can be searched underneath for sale. Now I will tell you there's about 1400 plus MLSs in the US and Canada. Um, they all do things a little bit differently. So I can tell you right now that HAR is having an issue with their data feed to our app with regards to foreclosures and short sales. So as of last week, those were not actually showing up, but KW is aware of it. They're working with HAR to get that feed reconnected. Uh, let's just say bathrooms, three daughters means at least three bathrooms. Living area, we're in 2,200 square feet right now. It's been real interesting with the quarantine. So let's just say we want to be between 3,000 and 4,500 there. And if you have fat fingers like me, you got to lift straight up or it'll move those sliders over. All right, so then I'm going to click on done in the top right hand corner. Oops, my price didn't stick. Let's put that price back in there 300 to 450. So now that I have all of the criteria entered, you can see on the screen are several properties that match my criteria. Now, why didn't something come up for sale in Black Horse Ranch? Well, maybe there's not enough bedrooms, bathrooms, or square footage in that neighborhood. Same thing with Lake Lynn Heights or First Bend. But you can see Cypress Creek Lakes has several listings that might fit my criteria. So now I can click on any one of those properties and start to get information about them. However, putting that search together took a little bit of time. So I could come in and zoom in a little bit. Let's say I don't want to be on the north side of Cypress Creek Lakes. I want to be on the south side. I want to be kind of on that Tuckerton side. I can click on draw on the screen. You see it towards the top right. There's a little finger. I'm going to click on draw. And then I'm going to say, I want to be in this portion of the neighborhood. I'm literally just tracing on the screen the area that I want to be in. And you can see when I did that, it outlined that area in blue and it's now only showing me properties for sale in that area. Even when I zoom out, it's only going to show me properties for sale that A, match my criteria and B, are in my shaded area. Now, all of that took time. That probably took about five minutes, right? Six minutes to go through, put in my criteria, trace my area. Now, I want to be able to easily come back to this search in the future. So I'm going to go ahead and actually save this as a custom search for my app so that I can access it anytime in the future. And I do that by clicking on the ribbon button in the top right hand corner. If I do that, I can then come in and say, okay, this is my Cypress Creek and I can call it whatever I want. I'm just going to call this Cypress Creek Lakes search and save. You'll see it says saved and now I can come through and maybe I've cleared all these filters. I'm looking in a completely different area. I'm looking at different things. All of a sudden I end up way over here on the map, right? And I'm like, no, I want to go back to Cypress Creek Lakes. If I click on the heart button in the very bottom toolbar, you'll see the fourth icon over says saved. If I click on that, 
At the bottom, you can see I've got recent saved searches. One of them is the one that I just created for Cypress Creek Lakes. I can click on it. Boom, I get taken right back to that spot on the map that I outlined earlier, and all of my criteria are now back available. So the consumer can set up as many saved searches as they want. How do I know? I've got a ton of them, right? You can see every time I teach this class, I set up a different saved search. So they could set up for saved searches for a variety of different neighborhoods. If they're looking in different neighborhoods, guys, they don't have to be actually searching to buy a home. They could set up a saved search for themselves. They could set up a saved search for dream properties, right? I've always talked about, I would love to be on Lake Travis at some point in the future. Like I wanna be on the water with a boat, right? There's my dream boat, still working on it. So I could set up a saved search right now for Lake Front, Lake Travis properties, even though I don't have any intention to be there for another 10 to 15 years. And then I could still see what the properties are for sale in that area. I could set up a saved search around uh, an investment property just to kind of keep an eye on the market, what's happening around my property. I could set up a saved search for maybe my parents are getting a little older and at some point we may need to get them out of that house. So I want to know the area there. I can set up a saved search guys for anywhere in the nation. Maybe one day I get to move to wine country. Of course, I look at property in wine country. I'm like, nope, staying in Texas. And yet I could set up a saved search for anywhere, not only in Texas or Houston, but all the way across the entire US and Canada. Okay, so saved searches can be built out for a variety of reasons. Next, let's look at some of the properties that show up in our saved search. So I'm gonna click on, let's say 380K there at the top. I'm gonna put my thumb on the photo and I'm gonna drag upwards. You see that maximizes the listing. And then I can actually see, all right, there are 36 photos uploaded to this listing. I can swipe left on the photos and see each one, or I can click on any one of them and it brings up the gallery view where I can see all of the photos. Now, if I wanted to look closer at any one of the photos, let's see, is this a gas burning fireplace or logs? Let me see, I'm gonna click on it. I can zoom in by spreading my fingers out, right? You guys know how to zoom. So it looks like it's gas because I can see the little nozzle on the right hand side. If my eyes are really bad, I can even turn my phone sideways and then I can get an even closer view doing the landmark versus portrait, right? So you can see, turn it sideways, turn it up and down. It'll flip the photo, allowing me to see even more of each one of the photos that are listed. So I can X out of that. And then again, keep swiping through the photos should I choose to. Underneath the photos, you've got the price in the top left, 380,000. I can see how many bedrooms, bathrooms, and square footage. There's some white space below the price above the address. If this property has had a recent decrease, price decrease, then there would be a little green squiggly arrow with the dollar amount of the actual price decrease listed in that white space between the price and the address. Obviously, I can easily see the address. Then I have three buttons, so I can do save, hide, or share. If this is a property that I'm like, yep, this is a keeper, this is one I might be interested in, this is one I might wanna schedule a tour, I can click on save, and it's going to say, okay, great, where do you want to save this property? Now, by default, you should have one collection that says first name favorites. So, Marty's favorites, Diana's favorites, Michael's favorites. I can, if I want to, save all the properties I'm interested in just to that same collection. However, if I wanna have a variety of collections, maybe these are my Cypress Creek Lakes homes, but I wanna differentiate them from my Town Lake homes, but I wanna differentiate those from my Fairfield homes, I could create collections for each one of those neighborhoods. And all I have to do is create new collection at the very bottom there, you'll see if you click on that, I can title it Cypress Creek lakes and then i can click on the radio button the white button next to it and then you'll see it's been saved and if i click on the right or it's been checked and then i can click on save and now that property has been saved to that collection if i want to see my collections again in the future i can just minimize this listing by clicking on the down arrow then drag it back down and then save to the bottom right first of all you can see now on the map that property has a heart next to it and I can click on the saved button that we were in previously. And now you can see I've created a recent collection called Cypress Creek Lakes. And I can click on that and then see all of the properties that are in the collection. 
you also have the ability to actually leave yourself notes. How often are you searching with something? You're like, why did I say that one? I don't remember that one. Why was that the one? I, oh, right. This is the one with no side neighbors. You're gonna have to excuse the spelling. And on the water, just because no one wants to see me type, right? So pretend that was all spelled correctly. So you can leave yourself a note. Fat fingers and being on camera while you're typing is always fun. All right, so I can click on save and then this that note would say, this is the one with no side neighbors and on the water. So they can leave themselves notes as to why they created the actual collection and why that property is in that collection. Now guys, think about this in a grander scale. It doesn't just have to be collections for properties they're looking to buy. What if they're looking to do a remodel? They could look at properties that are being actively on the market for sale and look at kitchens in those properties and say, yeah, that's the kitchen I really like. Save that one to my kitchen collection. Maybe I'm doing a master bathroom remodel at the same time. So I've got a master bathroom saved collection of master baths I really like. Maybe I'm gonna add a pool at some day in the future. And every time I see a pool that I really like, I wanna save that home to a collection that says great pools. So that when it comes time to meet with my contractor, my designer, my pool guy, whatever it may be, I can just pull up my collection and show them the photos of the homes that are there and say, I want the kitchen to look like this, but I want the island to look like that, but I want the backsplash to look like this. The master bath, I like this shower, but I like that tub. And then in my pool, I like the rock feature on this property, but I want the design of this feature, but I want the flagstone to look like this, right? So you can see all the different collections that you could create outside of just creating collections for areas of properties I'm looking at. We talked about the save button. Let's look at the second one, 398K. So I'm gonna pull up this listing, right? And I start to look through it. I look at the photos. You can see it's had a recent price decrease. So you can see there, right, the downward. Now I believe that is literally $1. Um, I'm not sure why somebody would reduce a property by $1 unless they just were playing games. And yet I do believe that that typically if it's, you know, a thousand or whatever, maybe it would actually say comma zero zero. Um, but let's just say that this is not a property I'm interested in. Don't want to see it on my map. Not really interested in it. It is not a winner. I'm going to click on the hide button in the middle. You can see the eye turns red. I joke that it kind of goes bloodshot. And now if I go by minimize this showing, click on that arrow in the top left-hand corner, drag the photo down. Now look at what happens to my map. That 398 goes gray, and if I move away and I come back, it actually disappears from the map. So how many times have you worked with a buyer that say, well, we've got our search set up, it's the same six homes every single day. And every day I click on all of them just in case it's one I haven't seen, and I, they're only it's the same six. They could actually use the KW Consumer app, look at all of the homes that are for sale in the area that they have set up with the filters they have selected, and then decide, is it a favorite or is it a hide? Favorite or hide, favorite or hide. And pretty soon they'll get down to the point where the only listings that are showing up in that area are ones that they're interested in. If they're not interested in any of them, hide them all. And then when they come back the next day to look at that saved search, if there's any new listings that show up, then boom, there you go, there's that new listing. You know that's one you haven't seen because you've hidden all the rest. So it's a great feature for people that are kind of you know, serial searchers, they're six months out and yet they're already looking at properties. They could go through and hide any ones that they do not like. Now, if for any reason they hid one and they wanted it back, at the top right hand corner, we're gonna click on that more button one more time. You can see the listing filters. We're gonna scroll down to the very bottom and there is show hidden listings. So if I click on that, you can see my results. I don't know if you noticed, it went from two to three. So not toggled on two listings, toggled on three listings. I go back to done and then you can see it shows back up. I'm going to click on that listing one more time and then I'm going to unhide it. So now it will show back up on my map. Okay, so that's for some reason they're like, oops, I didn't mean to hide that. Let me get it again. Then they can see it. Share, very similar to any of the apps that you guys have used before. I can share this property via text. I can airdrop it. I can share it via email. I can do a Facebook post about it. Slack, Messenger, Discord, whatever other chat or communication programs you have on your phone. Now do note that it actually just shares a link. So they do not have to have the KW Consumer app to receive that property. 
right? So if they're sending it to a partner, a husband, wife, best friend, mom, you know, whatever, then the other person, uh, when they click on it, they're just going to be taken to a web browser page that shows the property. So it doesn't prompt them to download the app and it doesn't require them to have the app downloaded either. Okay, so just a heads up on that. As we scroll down through some additional information about this property, you can see that embedded in the app are Keller Mortgage and Keller Covered. I know you guys have talked about both of those at the Market Center in there and what a great asset they are. Now, does that mean you can't talk about your local lenders? Of course not, right? And I think most of your local lenders are happy to compete because I think especially some of those local lenders, they have things that Keller Mortgage don't, especially a local presence, actually being able to be there at closing, things like that. And then they offer some incentives as well. So the great thing about Keller Mortgage is the reality of having that on your app kind of is a CYA. Because if for any reason, the lender that you're using doesn't have as an, as an aggressive of a program as Keller Mortgage, then the consumer can never say, well, you never told me about Keller Mortgage because it's actually right there in the listing itself. Uh, where is the tab to find the apps to share listings through? Uh, Rich, you're gonna click on the share button. Click on the share button and then you can see down at the bottom. Uh, this is on an iPhone, of course, but here's all the different places I can share that. Uh, you've also got Keller covered. So if they're looking to save money on their insurance, they can click on that and get uh, either an initial insurance quote or if they already have insurance, they can run the numbers and see if they can save any money as well. Next, I can click on read more and see the public description of the property. As I scroll up, I'm gonna get some additional information. Let me ask you a question based upon the screen that's showing on my phone right now. Who can tell me who the listing agent is? Who is the listing agent on this property? Who is the listing agent? More, I've got it, right? Diana's got questions. There is no listing agent listed on any of the listings, at least in the Houston area, on the KW Consumer app because Texas does not require that. So let me ask you this, gut check, is the consumer that you are working with right now using an app that will easily and quickly provide them the information of the listing agent? In fact, you probably need to be concerned that your consumer may be using an app that provides them with several realtors information. And typically you are not one of those. Right? So do you want your consumer using an app where if they have a question, their only op uh, alternative is to click on ask your agent button in the bottom right hand corner there, and they can get information directly from you, you will receive that request. Or do you want them using an app where it easily lists the listing uh, agents information or multiple premier agents information. So this is not necessarily a selling point guys for the consumer. However, it should be a selling point for you. Why do you want your people using the app? What's the big deal? I don't understand, it's just another app. Well, it protects you as the agent from having your consumer, and if you've never had a buyer do this, honestly, you probably just haven't worked with enough buyers because it does happen from time to time where the buyer will ghost you, and all of a sudden you find out they went around you directly to the listing agent, and now they're negotiating directly with them. Okay, so you have to be really careful about that. And obviously Keller Williams wants to do its best to protect you from that happening. So the only agent that they can get information about is the one they partnered with at the beginning, which we talked about. They click on your ask your agent, you're going to receive that request, okay? As I continue to scroll down, I'm gonna get some additional home details. Again, all being pulled from the MLS. Next, I can get the neighborhood page. So we talked about that earlier when we dove into Town Lake. You can see I can click on explore and get kind of the detailed information about the area, or I can just see basic stats on the listing page. What locals say, again, driven by spatial.ai. Walkability, that's a company that basically examines uh, proximity to public transportation, uh, walking trails throughout the neighborhood, sidewalks, et cetera, proximity to things like grocery stores, restaurants, churches, things, you know, kind of tells you whether or not it's a walkable neighborhood. If you think about mass, um, I don't know, I think about like Manhattan, places like that. Obviously they have like townhome next to a coffee shop, next to a grocery store, next to another townhome. That's probably a little bit more walkable. And obviously we have a lot of master plan communities that we don't put grocery stores in the middle of for good reason. Um, so a little less car dependent as far as that goes. 
Now let's look at commute times. Let's say I wanted to buy this property, but I wanted to know how far is it from here to the office. I can actually click on search for a place and I can type in 19708. And you can see it pulls up Northwest Three Way. And now I can see it would be an 18 minute commute from this listing to the office. Now again, guys, this is grain of salt. We know if they drove at eight o'clock, it might be a little bit longer. If they drove at midnight, it might be a little shorter, but it's an average commute time based upon this listing to the actual office. I actually don't have to have an address though. So if I wanted to put in, let's just say Torchy's Tacos, cause that's my favorite place, right? Well, you can see it literally, it didn't, I didn't even have to put in a city, a state, an address. It starts to bring up the ones closest to this listing. And the one I like there is in that Pound Lake Center, Barker Cypress. It's gonna tell me it's only six minutes there. Cool. Well, maybe if I have a beverage or two and three or four tacos and then the guacamole is amazing, I wanna write off those calories. I can see it's actually only a 10 minute bike ride. And if I have one too many beverages and neither of those are safe, I could actually walk home. It would only take me 37 minutes to walk home from Torchies. I can add up to three places as a consumer. So work, the girl's school, church, anything along those lines. And I have worked with buyers before, and a lot of times it's maybe the older parents. So like I worked with a buyer one time where they said, our mom was with us, we are moving. We have to be within walking distance of some sort of grocery store in a Catholic church. And I was like, I don't think HAR will allow me to put those in as search criteria, right? Well, I could have trained that consumer to go ahead and put in Right? They probably have an idea of where they want to live. Then we could do a search for neighborhood grocery stores or neighborhood Catholic churches, and we could type in the address for each one of those. And then each time they're looking at a listing in that neighborhood, they would know how far does mom have to walk to get to church or to the grocery store, right? So these are examples that the KW Consumer app has, but not a lot of, a lot of other apps may have the ability to customize for each consumer the three places that they wanna know, drive time, walk time, and bike time to and from. Next, we can see the schools for this specific listing. And again, there's the rankings, national rankings. That's sourced from Pitney Bowes, you can see underneath. Next, we have upcoming open houses and then a mortgage calculator. Be careful on the mortgage calculator, guys. It does not include taxes. And we know obviously in our area that can make a big swing on your monthly payment. So just make sure they understand that. Some additional information for Keller Mortgage Keller Cover. Now, the exciting thing is you guys are taking this class after the app update. So the app was updated last Wednesday, and one of the new additions to the app since that update is the availability for the consumer to request a tour directly from the app. So they can click on Schedule Video Tour, and then they're going to have the ability to select up to three days within the next week and it cannot be the same day. So you don't have to worry about them requesting a tour the same exact day. But I could go in and say, all right, tomorrow's Tuesday and I work, so that's gonna have to be evening. Uh, let's say Wednesday I'm off, so that could be any time. And on Thursday I have time at my lunch break. So let me put in afternoon there. As I scroll up on this request, you can see that I have the ability to request a live video tour, meaning I can't make it there or would prefer not to be there because of COVID concerns. However, I would like for you to be able to be there, right? And then tour me through the house. Guys, this doesn't only have to be local COVID concerns. Think about how often you work with buyers that are relocating from another city or state. They don't have time to come in every weekend, but they do want to look at properties online and then they could actually request a tour. I've actually done that, but I didn't have this kind of functionality. Like they had to send me a list of properties they wanted to see. And then we had to decide which, uh, okay, we're going to do FaceTime or what are we going to do? And then choose the, uh, you know, work that out between us. This request will actually say which piece of technology would I prefer that you use? So if it's, uh, I've got an Apple product, I'm going to do FaceTime. Uh, we all have Zoom and Google Hangouts we can all get. I could schedule the video tour that way. You also have the ability just to request a good old fashioned in-person tour. Right, so when things calm down, obviously this will still be included on our app. And so they'll be able to request an in-person tour as well. So I'm just gonna do the live video tour. Let's do Zoom, FaceTime, and Google Hangouts and schedule video tour. You can see that a, a confirmation screen pops up and says it's been submitted. 
your agent will get in touch with you soon to confirm. Guys, it says via email, but feel free to call them or text them, whatever makes sense, right? Next, you can see activity for this home, nearby homes for sale. If you start to scroll through there, if I wanna see anything else, and then I can get all the legal information and marketing information included as well. So that's any listing will include all of that information that we just went through. Okay, so a lot of information that is available for the consumer to get informed about these properties and about these neighborhoods. Let me ask you this, show of hands, right? There's another button down here on your screen that says raise hand, we talked about it earlier. Raise your hand if you're like me. Doesn't matter where you are. Doesn't matter where you're driving. You don't even have to be in Houston. I mean, you could be on vacation and you drive by, walk by, see a for sale sign. And the first thought is, how much is it? Right, are you like me? Am I the only one that does that? Raise your hand if you're the same way, right? I don't even, I'm not even looking to move. That house isn't even that cute. That's not even a neighborhood. I don't even know where I am, but I wanna know, I'm curious. How much is it? Guys, the consumer is just like us. They are nosy, they are interested, they wanna know what's happening, right? So they have the ability to do the same thing that we do, and that anytime you are anywhere in the US or Canada, and you see a for sale sign, and you wanna know how much is that home for sale for, they can click at that arrow at the very top right hand corner. It's cockeyed to the side just a little bit, right? Click on it. It's going to take all of us to a different place because we're not all sitting together, right? But you can see I'm sitting in Katy. So it zoomed me in where I'm sitting and now shows me properties that are for sale around my current location. How often do you have your consumer call you and say, hey, we saw a house the other day. I'm not really sure what street it was on. I don't even really know what neighborhood we are, but it had red brick and gables and brown shutters. Um, could you find it? Right? And you're like, how in the heck am I supposed to find that house? So you could get that person on your consumer app and then train them, hey, anytime you're anywhere, you see a house you're interested in. I don't know the street, I don't know the address, but I'm interested, right? So you could click on that arrow at the top right hand corner and it would zoom them in on where they were sitting, standing, driving, biking, and they could click on the properties around them to get the address. Uh, Lena, if you don't have the scheduled tour, you're gonna wanna go to either your app store, whether it's Google Play or the iPhone app store, uh, and do an update. So you need to basically update your app to make sure you have scheduled tour. That was with the release last Wednesday. So make sure you have the most updated version of the app. Next question, how many of you have gone on a buyer showing or a listing appointment and you've said, ooh, I wish I knew it back to that. I wish I knew that's what the neighbor's house looked like. I wish I knew a little bit more about what this neighborhood looked like, All right? One time it happened to me and I changed the way that I prepared for my listings every day after that. I went to a house with a fully prepared CMA using comps in the neighborhood professional marketing presentation ready to go and I show up in this house backed to a commercial car wash. You could literally hear the humming of the car wash motors, the pump motors going when you were inside the house. You could go out in the backyard and you could see that there's the fence line and then there's the bays of the car wash and you could hear people playing music, you could hear the pressure washing just getting sprayed off. I mean it was just I was in shock, number one, and number two, I was like, man, this CMA is right out the window. You just lost probably $25,000, $35,000 just merely based upon the fact that you're back to that and I should have known and now I look like an idiot because I'm not prepared to give them a CMA. I mean, I'm gonna give them the CMA and then be like, well, but it's a little off. That doesn't look professional. From that point forward, I looked up every single address that I went on a listing appointment for using Google Earth. I actually typed in the address so I wouldn't be caught off guard like that. However, remember the partnerships that we have within the consumer app? One of those is Google, and it includes a Google Earth version. So if you click on more in the top right-hand corner again, we spent time in the listings tab going through the filters. Click on map. You see the second tab to the right? Click on map, and you now have the ability to choose satellite view. If I click on satellite, and then done, my view completely changes. Do you see how I now have the overhead view of what's happening? I can actually start to zoom in and I can get an idea of what's happening in each one of these neighborhoods. 
I can see, okay, well, this one looks like it backs to a, a park, and this one has a little lake, and let me see, all right, so I'm just kind of zooming around and checking things out. Let's say I was gonna go take a listing in this neighborhood, Hunter's Terrace, and my seller did not have a pool. <laughs> I might be in trouble, guys. How many people in Hunter's Terrace have a pool? I'm gonna be one of 25 homes that don't have one, right? And there's a ton that do. So again, that button can be found by clicking on more in the very top right-hand corner, and then click on map. And you can toggle back and forth between satellite and default. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to default, but it's a great tool if you say, how many times have you had buyers say, hey, we wanna make sure that we don't back to, we don't back to power lines, we don't back to a bayou, we don't want to back to a busy street. We don't want to back to ah, blah, 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 blah. How many times have you looked at photos of a listings that don't show the power lines, the busy street, the bayou, whatever it may be. So this is a great way for you even as the agent to use the consumer app to view what's happening around that house to kind of get a better understanding of, okay, let me take a look at it. I literally just had a buyer request for showings this weekend. And we nixed one of them because I looked up the property using the consumer app and I could see that it actually backed to not only a busy street, but then you could see the shell station right across the corner. And I could tell all of that from that Google view, the Google maps view. I actually took a screenshot of it with my phone and I texted it back to the buyer. And I said, Hey, this is an aerial view of the house. Do you see the house there in the bottom right hand corner? That's the gas station. That's going to be right across the street from your back door. Are you sure that you want to look at that house? And they were like, no. And they already told me they, they wanted to make sure they had, they had, they didn't want rear neighbors. So this house had no rear neighbors. <laughs> it just had a street and then a shell station. So they nixed it from the list based upon that. So another use for you guys as not only a consumer, but as the agent with the actual app. All right. So we have talked about the different ways to search. I can search by location or landmark. I can search by neighborhood. I can search by a standard filter of home searches. I can draw on the map, all right? So we drew that area. I can click on the arrow and get my current location. And then I can even do a default versus satellite map view to zoom in on the overhead. Now let's shift a little bit. I want you to show the, the five buttons that are at the bottom of the screen. We just spent a whole lot of time doing search. Okay, now I wanna shift into uh, we spent time in more. I want to show you a couple things there. So within more, if you click on the my account button, you'll see that you have places. Third one down is places. This is where if they don't want to add them within the actual listing, they could add the school, the work, the church, the grocery store, any of the three most popular locations they want to know the commute time to. They can change them at any time. They can delete them by just clicking on the trash can. It'll say, are you sure you want to delete this one? I'm going to say yes. So that's where they can change their places, which will show up on each one of their listings. Consumers can also share the list, share this app from within the app. And so can you, however, you have to be careful, okay? Because the way that the share is built, it's built for a consumer to share it with another consumer. So it's not you as the agent. However, you do have the ability to do it. You're just gonna have to change things slightly. So fourth item down says share the KW app. Remember, this is a consumer using the app. So if they went to share it with another friend, husband, wife, partner, et cetera, and they did a text message, it would say, here's the link. And then the consumer is saying, I use the KW app to search for homes with my realtor, Marty Miller. Download it now for a personalized experience. If you as the agent want to share the app from within, and I'm going to show you some other ways that you can get the app into people's hands, but this is just one of four. If I want to share the app from within the app, I could use this whole setup. I would just want to make sure that I went in and changed what the text actually said. So it could say, hey, Randy, please use my KW app to search for homes uh, with me, right? Whatever you want to put. You just need to change the text slightly so it wasn't awkward saying from Marty to Marty. Like, that's just weird. And if I put this in and then send it to Randy, then obviously I could easily send it out and Randy would then get that text, okay? 
So you can do that. I'm going to show you three other ways to share the app when we get into command as well. Uh, feed, another button at the bottom there, second one over. This application is being continually updated and improved. Uh, right now, uh, they are working on the ability for me to create a saved search from within command and then share that search with you, the consumer, in your app. Same thing with collection. I could actually do the same thing. Now, earlier, somebody asked about, well, can I save a search and share it with someone else? You can, as long as you add them as a co-buyer. So if you click on the more button one more time, you'll see the third option down is add co-buyer. You would put in the co-buyer, and once they had accepted the app and downloaded it, then in the feed, you'll start to see each other's saved searches and collections. Lastly, you can see the guide, and that's where we're gonna go next. Anytime you update as the agent a timeline guide, your consumer will get a heads up. So what is the guide? I want you to click on guide in the bottom there. Two tabs here. You can scroll up and see each one of these guides has several steps included in them. And if you click on each one of the steps, you'll see you get additional information about that actual step. Let me ask you this. If I shared uh, this app with you as my consumer, who would you assume wrote these guides? I shared it with you. You are my consumer. You download it. You're looking at these guides. Who do you assume wrote them as the consumer? Yeah, that's correct, Teresa, the realtor. You did, Teresa. You wrote it, or I wrote it, right? Depending on which side, which hats we're wearing. So the consumer is going to assume that you wrote this guide. You built it out, you added all the steps, you added all the information. Let me ask you this. How many of you have spent any time actually reading through these steps? Because as soon as you start sharing this app and they get into this guide, they are going to start assuming you wrote it all. These are all the things that you say happen when we search for homes. These are all the things you say happen when we go to tour homes. So it's super important that as you start to share this app, you spend time in the guide. This is your next piece of homework. Get some time, maybe 30, 45, an hour, depending on how fast you read, and set that time aside. Get a pen and a piece of paper, start going through each one of these steps. You wanna take notes of, is there anything in this guide step that I don't necessarily agree with or I don't do? Take that note. Now that I've finished reading through this particular step, is there anything I do during this step that wasn't mentioned? Take down that note, okay? Because you have the ability to customize these guides for your consumer. And even if you don't go through that process, at minimum, it's important that you're spending time understanding the expectations and the standards that you're setting inadvertently and yet now knowingly for your client. Okay, so important that you go through both of these guides. Let me just use this one as an example. I'm a huge fan of the KWRI marketing team. I think they do an amazing job. Each one of the selling steps is very detailed. You can see there's a whole lot of information included. That being said, does anyone agree with the fact that selling a home only takes five little steps, right? I mean, we already have to fight hard enough to get paid our 3%. If I share this app with a selling client, they're like, all you do is five things and you want $14,000, I might be up against it, right? So I would definitely say that look on the selling guide. If you don't do anything on the buying guide, the buying guide is, is a little bit further um, divided out, in my opinion, than the selling guide is. Just for example, showing your home. I would think there's probably at least three steps that happen before we go to show your home. There might be a step that's called staging your home. And we talk about all the staging techniques, right? Do you get to meet with my stager or not? What do I recommend? Are there any you know, people or, or vendors that I could put their information in that step just to kind of be as a service to you? Then we've got to prepare your home for photography and videography, right? My photographer is very picky. He always says, okay, first of all, all the lights in the house have to work. And if there are multiple lights in any one fixture, they all have to be the same wattage and the same style. Meaning we can't use cool white and warm white. We can't have a 40 watt versus a 75 watt. The reason is his photography lenses pick up those differences and it makes the, the light look weird if you're using different fixtures. Um, so I have an entire list of things that I used to send to my client 
prior to that photographer appointment that I could put in the app. All the blinds have to face up. Light on the ceiling makes the room look bigger. Ceiling fans can't be running, blurs the photo, whatever it may be, right? No cars in the driveway, et cetera. Uh, then you can have a step that's preparing your home for the MLS. I'm gonna talk about, I get the photos back from the photographer. I'm gonna put a description on the majority of those. I'm gonna write a public description. If I've done any sort of video tour or Matterport or anything, I'm gonna upload those links. I'm uploading the documents that we filled out during the listing presentation to the actual listing, et cetera. And then we're gonna show your home. So you can see those are just some examples of additional steps you might wanna add. Now there's a lot of that same information we just talked about within this step. It's just my personal belief that those probably should have been broken out into multiple steps. So at this point, we're going to transition. We're taking off the consumer hat. We're gonna put the agent hat on, and I'm gonna to talk to you about how you can, one, make the changes in the guide, two, we're gonna talk about sharing the app, and then finally, we're gonna talk about the things that you can see the consumer is doing within command while they're inside of their app. So let me change this share real quick. And we are going to move to the actual command. So give me two seconds to get to there. There we go. So we're actually going to come into command. And the last thing we just talked about was the guides. So how do I go through and actually customize the buyer and listing guides within my app? That's included under the consumer tab. So I'm gonna click on consumer, and then you can see three tabs pop up. There's three tabs that are up here. I'm gonna use guide builder to review the buying and selling guide. Right now, guys, there's only two available. However, in the future, you will actually have the ability to build additional guides and then assign them to your contact or opportunity. So you could have a buying guide for first time home buyer, versus a buying guide for luxury home buyer versus farm and ranch, et cetera, right? So you can build out those different guides, same thing on the selling side. So you could have different selling guides. If it's a luxury property, maybe I do a few things differently than I would on a standard listing, et cetera. Right now there are just the two. So in order to make edits, anytime you are in command and you are looking to make an edit, you're looking for a pencil. Anytime you're in command and you see a pencil, you should know that that means you can edit it. So we talked about the selling guide. I can click on that pencil and I'm brought into the actual selling guide. I can see the five steps that are included. And maybe I made a note during the showing your home portion that there was something that I didn't want to do or something that I wanted to add. All I would have to do would be click on that tab and then I can dive in and start to say, okay, here's where I can change the image. I can change the title. I can change the subtitle. I can also change the workspace details, which is what shows up when they click on the card. Okay, so I can change any one of those five steps that have already been created. I also have the ability to add a step. So I could click on a new step. Uh, we talked about uh, staging, staging your home. home. And then I could choose a photo that I wanted to be included on that. You do have to have a photo. So my recommendation is you spend some time going to some uh, sites that have uh, copyright and royalty free logos. Uh, Shutterstock is one of those and get you some of the photos revolving around real estate and then you can create that new step. If I want to move this by default, the new steps show up at the bottom. And so in order to remove it, I can just move it up to the top and then I would click on it to write in all of the workspace text that we just talked about. So my checklist of staging items that I do, uh, if I let them meet with my, or I arrange an appointment with my stager, if they need to call my stager, if, you know, any of those types of things where I recommend decluttering and depersonalizing, I would put all the information in that actual text. If I didn't like this step and I wanted to remove it, I could just click on the trash can. And anytime I make any changes, it's super important to click on save changes before you go to another page, just so that your progress isn't lost. And I have the ability again to make those same edits to my buying guide. Any of these steps I can edit, rearrange, change, remove, right? Here's a good example. I have a test step in here that I did last time and I need to remove that. So now I'm gonna go up and save my changes so that doesn't actually show up on my consumer's app. 
And now you can see here are the guides that are now included. Okay, so that's the way that you come in and customize the buying and selling guide. Again, guys, remember, you're sharing the app. They're assuming you wrote this. So as long as you're good with everything included in the guides and the number of steps and the order, great. You know what it says, you know the expectations, you're good to go. If for any reason you need to change anything, this is where you would make those changes. Let's talk about sharing the app. So I told you the first way was obviously sharing it from within the app, consumer to consumer, just make sure you change the text so it looks like it's coming from you as the agent. The second way is to manually share your actual consumer app using your link. So if you click on any one of these three tabs that you're in under the consumer applet, you're going to see a site and app settings button. You wanna go ahead and click on site and app settings. And when you do that, you're gonna see four tabs. Teaser alert, in the future, you're gonna see a fifth tab that actually talks about featured listings and it will allow you to choose up to 12 of your listings that you want featured on your agent site and they will be right below the search box or on your consumer app and there'll actually be a default collection that then says, um, you know, I don't know exactly what it's gonna say, but I believe it says Marty's featured listings or something along those lines. And that's coming here within the next uh, few weeks. So if I click on URLs, you can see that I have an app URL right here in the middle of the screen. This is my app URL, meaning that if a consumer clicks on it, they're gonna be taken to a page that has my name actually on it. If they're using a phone or tablet, they can actually click on download from the app store and they're gonna get a branded version of my app by clicking on one of those buttons. If they're using a desktop or laptop, they can actually enter their phone number and a link will be sent to their phone where they can do the same thing, be taken immediately to the app store or Google Play Store in order to download. Additionally, you can see that there's a video in here about the KW app and then key features listed about the KW app as well. And so the second method is to actually share this specific app link manually via email, via text, via Facebook message, whatever you're doing, right? You're having a conversation with your people, send out that actual link and then they can download your app from there. Right now, I'll tell you the app text code um, has been a major issue. They are, uh, the labs team is actually removing this feature, this functionality, um, because there have been just too many issues with it and they cannot dive in deep enough to figure out whether it's Android versus iPhone, whether it's certain versions of your phone, whether it's the receiver or the sender. Um, so they're actually removing the app text code. And yes, uh, Rich, we are under site and app settings and then under URLs to get this actual link. So step number two, manually share the link. Step number three, use smart plans. Okay, smart plans, fourth icon down, looks like a diploma. If you click on that applet, you'll get taken into the smart plans portion of KW Command. If you've never used smart plans, your screen might say something to the effect of, you have no saved smart plans. Don't freak out, that's okay. If you have all of them like me, that's also okay, it doesn't really matter. We're gonna show you how to get the Promote My App Smart Plan. So if you click on Library, you'll see that there are 10 Smart Plans built out by the Labs and KWRI team, and one of them is actually called Promote My App. Okay, this Smart Plan, just like any, if you want to see what it does, I can click on View Steps, and see here are the steps included in this smart plan. So the first thing it does is it sends out an email. It's automated. It looks very similar to what this actual page looks like as well. Okay, if you ever wanna see it, just put yourself on the smart plan and then you can see what the email looks like. Next, it's going to wait a day and then it's either going to fire a task or a text. If you have Twilio already connected in your settings of your command account, then the text will be sent out automatically on your behalf. If you do not, it will fire a task for you to send this text. Twilio is a, a program that you can connect to. It integrates with KW Command. Now it's not free. However, uh, the cost is less than one penny per text sent or received. Okay, sent or received as far as the text go. So again, this is underneath the Smart Plans applet in your smart plan library, you can see the text that are going out. If you want to set up Twilio, you're gonna to have to do that from settings. So you would come into settings, you'll find Twilio, you'll want to connect, 
It's going to ask you for a credit card number. Just so you know, again, these aren't free. Uh, it will bill you $20 to start. And then anytime you drop below 10, it'll rebill you back up to 20, just like the toll tag does, right? Um, so this is a great way for the steps in any of these smart plans that include text to be automatically fired on your behalf. If not, you're just going to get a text, uh, excuse me, a task for you to send the text. Here's an example of the text that's going to go out. It's going to wait three more days, and then you can see it will fire a second text. If for any reason, or well, let's do this first. I want to add this smart plan. I like it. I want to put my people on it. I want them to start using my app. I will click on add smart plan. It will then show up underneath my smart plans. I then have the ability to come in and see, okay, here's the promote my app. So I'm going to go over, and if you see a pencil, you can see a pencil on all of these. However, some of them are grayed out. Some of them are solid black. So if I click on one that's solid black, I actually have the ability to edit that particular smart plan. In the Promote My App smart plan, I can actually edit the texts that are sent out. So you can hear this is text number one, and this is text number two. Now your text number two doesn't look like this because I actually went in and edited it to say, hey, it's Marty with KW. Remember that Twilio is sending these texts on your behalf, but it's being sent from a business text line. It's not being sent from your personal phone number. So you always want to make sure, and I sent out a text message to everybody when I first got Twilio saying, hey, um, your real estate business is very important to me. And I know during the process of any transaction that we may incur, that we are most likely at some point going to text one another about the transaction. It was important for me to make sure those texts were kept private and secure and separate from my personal texts. So I've invested in a program called Twilio, which will then allow all of our business texts to be kept separate from my grocery list and conversations that I'm having with friends or family members. So when you see a number from a text from this number, know that that's my business text line. You feel free to text it back anytime. And if you ever need to call me, please call me on my personal cell phone number, 281, blah, 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 right? So you give them that. Even then, when you send them a Twilio text, it's coming from a number that's not in their phone. Most likely they're not saving your business text line to their phone. So always make sure with Twilio text that you identify yourself. So that's why I just changed this one to say, hey, it's Marty with KW. And then I clicked on the check mark. You also have the ability, just so you know, in any one of these texts, and this is across any smart plan, to add what are called merge fields. So this little funky F symbol here is for merge fields. And if you click on it, then you can bring in any one of these fields to any text that you're sending out. So I could actually come in and say, hey, space, merge field, contact first name, comma, it's Marty with KW. If I sent this to Brandy, it'd say, hey, Brandy, it's Marty with KW. Hey, Chris, it's Marty with KW. Hey, Crystal, it's Marty with KW. It's gonna pull in the contact's name for whoever's on the smart plan. Now that I've made a change, I can just scroll down and click on this checkbox, or I can make the save at the top right-hand corner as well. It will now save that version. Right now it's updated, and anyone put on it moving forward can now see this is what the, check, the text is actually going to say. In order to add someone to the smart plan, I have three options. I can add them from within this smart plan applet by just coming over. This is the Promote My App smart plan. I'm gonna add people to it by clicking on add contact. And then I can search by name if I just wanted to manually add people to it. I wanna add Randy and so I would click on Randy Olive and then I would wanna add Randy and so I would click on Randy, spell her name right. Oh, come on, I know Brandy's in my, maybe Brandy's not. How, Brandy, how did you manage to not get in my database? We're gonna to need to fix that. Um, I could do David. Right, and there's David, and so I would choose David. Right, so you could go through manually and choose the people you wanted to add. I also have the ability to add people by tab. So say I wanted to add only my buyers to this smart plan right now. I could click on my buyer tag, and then it would show me here are the 17 contacts that you have associated with that tag, and I could select all, and you can see one, two, three, four, plus 13 more. It's gonna add those 17 people to the consumer, uh, excuse me, the promote my app smart plan. So I can add people from the actual smart plan tab. I can also add them from contacts. So if I'm putting in or editing one specific contact, I can click on that contact's name. 
I can click on smart plans and then it'll say either you have some and it would list what they're already on or you don't have any added. Click on add to smart plan and then promote my app. And you'll see I can start them on the program right now and it would fire that email immediately. Or I could say, hey, don't fire it until this date and choose which date I wanted to start them on. That's if one contact needs to be added. If I want to add multiple contacts from within the contact applet, then I would either filter. So example, I did that buyer filter from within the uh, smart plans applet. I can come in and actually search for buyer in my contacts. Oops, that's a system tag, excuse me. There we go, and apply. And you'll see it gives me 17 contacts. I would click on this checkbox to the left of name which checks all of those contacts. You can see I've selected 17 of them. And then I could do a bulk action, add to smart plan, and it'll tell me which smart plan do you wanna add from there. So that's the third option of being able to get somebody on a smart plan. Uh, Teresa, hero text is what shows up, uh, the main thing that shows up on your page. So for example, uh, the question was, what do you want the hero text to be on your page? This is hero text. So mine actually says, let's find your next home. That was the hero text that I selected. All right, so we've talked about sharing from within the app, manually sharing your link, using a smart plan. The fourth and final option is to use social media. So if I go into the campaigns applet of command and click on campaigns, as long as I have come into my settings menu and connected either my Facebook account and I have a Facebook business page associated with that account, or my Twitter account, or both, I can actually then click on social posts. And you can see under settings, not hard, you would actually come in and you can see there's gonna be one for Facebook post scheduling and Twitter post scheduling. I need to make sure that I've connected my personal account here, personal account there, and I have to have business pages associated with this personal account. From campaigns, then all I'm gonna do is click on social posts. Guys, this is free and very powerful. If I click on social posts, a lot of people say, Marty, I'm just not good with Facebook, I'm not good with Twitter, I'm not good with marketing in general. Guys, I'm not either. Like literally, my stuff in Canva looks like a third grader made it. So that's why I'm super blessed that we have a KWRI marketing team that's amazing at what they do. I could literally come in here and schedule three posts to go out on my Facebook business page my Twitter account within about seven minutes, I would bet, because this is the process. Click on social posts, scroll down on the right-hand side, you're gonna see there are two social posts that have already been created for us. All I have to do is click on this arrow. It's got a professionally designed photo with professionally suggested text. Now, if I don't like this text, I could click on shuffle. There's another version of the text. I could click on it one more time. There's another version. I could just choose which text I like, or I could actually click anywhere on this text and then just type something here that I wanted to go in. Okay, once I have the text solved, you can see I've got the marketing photo already loaded. As I scroll down, I have the opportunity to publish this right now to my business page or to my Twitter account, or I could schedule it. And then you can see I've got my business page here. If you have more than one business page, you would choose. And then I've got my Twitter account. And then I would decide, when do I want this to go out? And I could schedule that based upon a certain day and then a certain time. And it would then schedule that post to go out this Saturday at nine o'clock on both my Facebook business page and my Twitter account. If I click on schedule posts, you'll see here's a preview. This is what it looks like on Facebook. This is what it looks like on Twitter. And as soon as I click on schedule posts, You'll now see that that post is going to show up in my calendar view in campaigns to go out on May 16th. So if I come up to the top, here it is right here, the week of May 10th through May 16th. Here's the post that's going out on my business page and my Twitter account on Saturday, May 16th. You can see at the top, I had something go out yesterday. I had something scheduled for 10 o'clock this morning. I've got stuff going out on Wednesday and on Friday. If I feel like maybe that's a little too much, I can always click on the three little dots and then delete that post. I can also click on the three little dots and edit the post. Okay, so either way, I'm gonna go ahead and delete it for now. Now you may say, well, there's only two posts over here. 
Uh, how am I going to post multiple times a week or multiple times a month the same two? Well, all I have to do is click on shuffle and you can see there's two new images with two new versions of text. I can shuffle again and just keep shuffling through. And I believe there's about a dozen of them that you can choose from. Here's one I would highly recommend goes out every single week. When you're looking at it, you're like, Marty, that's just a black box. Why would I want that to go out? It's actually the app video. And you can schedule this. You can see I've actually got it scheduled, right, to go out tomorrow or today, this morning. So if I click on play, professionally designed, professionally built with professional soundtrack video talking about the app. Now you can see that I just posted this this morning. Now it went out, what, two hours ago. No one's watched it yet. However, if you have a lot of people on your business page or Twitter, then you can see how many times they played the video, how long they actually watched it, and then what percent right, of your fans actually watched the video. So if you got 10 fans and one of them watched it, it would be 10%, something along those lines. No one's watched it yet, so I've got 0%. But it's cool that you can start to see this kind of metrics with regards to how successful it's going out. So a quick and easy way, and again, like I said, you can click on shuffle and go through, this one's brand new, this is the first time I've seen this one. So you can see that they're continually adding additional quick social posts to go out to stay kind of updated. This one's brand new, first time I've seen that one as well. So probably now up to probably 20 or so different texts that you can easily schedule and you can see because I've taught this class so many times that I've got my post going out Monday, Wednesday, Friday, every single week. I haven't gotten to June yet because we haven't gone that far. And you could spend 20 minutes a week scheduling the three or four posts you want going out that week, or you could spend 30 minutes a month and plan for the entire month. So that's how you can basically come in and create posts for your social page. So it looks like Chris and uh, Teresa are asking similar questions. You can only schedule posts on your business page. Okay, you can only schedule it on your business page. So you can't actually schedule a post for your personal page. That's why you've got to go in and create a Facebook business page because when you connect and command your personal profile, it links then any business page if you have associated and then you would choose which one you want it to go out on. Uh, Rich, I've got it going out three times a week. Uh, my personal preference, I think you, you'd be fine even up to four times a week. Remember, the algorithm for Facebook and Twitter is making sure that not everybody on your page is seeing the same post. There is no way that when we're on Facebook, we're seeing everything every one of our friends posted. There's just no way. So it's basically saying, okay, I'll choose X percentage of your people to see this and Y percentage. Obviously, if they're interacting with it, then that tends to go up. It starts to show up on more people's pages. Um, so I don't think there's any way that you would be, you could probably post the exact same post three or four times a day, not a day, excuse me, three or four times a week and still not run into someone that's seen it more than once. And that's just because the algorithm is kind of preventing people from seeing more or less of it. So um, yeah, you can see my cadence is just Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I typically do them all at 9 a.m. just so that they're going out at the consistent time throughout the week. Let's talk about what people can see. So first, a couple of things, guide steps. As we talked about that custom guide that you have on your consumer app, and my recommendation is use that as a selling point. When you're at the buyer consultation, when you're at the listing appointment and you're saying, Mr. Buyer, Mrs. Seller, whatever, uh, the process of buying and selling a home can be very intense. It can be stressful. There are gonna be times where you may be concerned or worried about where we are. And when you work with a Keller Williams agent like me, you get access to our KW consumer app which is going to walk you through a custom guide that I've helped build that will tell you every step of the buying or selling process. And you will know exactly where we are throughout that process at any time, because I'm actually going to check off the items as we do them. Now, if you're going to tell them that you got to make sure you know how to do that. So we actually don't get the opportunity to manage the guide until after you have built an opportunity for that person. So you can see in this case, I've got my pipeline. I'm just gonna choose, um, Elena is one of my test cases. She's a friend of mine that downloaded the app. And inside the actual opportunity, you'll see there are several tabs across the top. 
the seller profile tab is where you manage the guide. So if I click on seller profile, you can see one, she's connected to me. Two, here's the guide. And all I have to do is click on manage guide and you can see the different steps that we have completed. So obviously if the appraisal came in, I have probably called her, I probably texted her, I probably emailed her, let her know, hey, we made value, or if we didn't, hey, call me. Um, and yet if I were ready to check that off in the actual app, I could click on completed and then save the changes. And now that will show up in Elena's app with a check mark next to that step in the guide. She will now see that we have completed that step. So you can tell your consumers, hey, at any point, you're always gonna know what we've done together, what we're doing right now, and what we have to do in the future in order to close your transaction. So it's a great selling point, just make sure you're managing it within the opportunities for that consumer. Finally, if you want to look and see what the consumer is actually doing, you are only gonna get alerts for certain items. Okay, the alerts happen in Kelly and they happen in Command. So you'll see, I have now a red dot next to the bell in my Command account. If I click on that bell, you'll see, first of all, that I logged in at the beginning of this class. Remember when I logged in, you saw that? Then you can actually see that I requested a video tour. So let's click on that request. And now these are notification items. So logged in and then requested a tour. You can see here's the requested a tour notification. The address of the property that I wanna see is listed. So I can click on that. And then you as the agent will get a view. This is what the property is. And then I can come back in and actually see the request itself. So click on view request. You can see I want to see it as a consumer, either Tuesday night, anytime Wednesday really, or Thursday afternoon. And here are the platforms because this is a video tour request, the platforms that I would request. Now I will tell you the in-person request still comes over labeled video tour request but it'll just say in person or something similar under platform. So just pay attention to that. Um, I would then call myself and say, hey, uh, my best time frame is actually Wednesday morning. Does that still work for you? Yes, it works for you, great. Do you have an iPhone? Yes, I have an iPhone, cool, we'll use FaceTime. Uh, do you have an Android? Cool, I have an Android, let's use Facebook Messenger, Google Duo, Google Hangouts. Uh, you have an Android, I have an iPhone, okay, let's use Facebook Messenger, Google Duo, one of the ones. Just the only one that is iPhone to iPhone is FaceTime. It's probably the most popular one, but you just have to be careful if they have an Android or you're having an Android, you can't use that because it's only a, a, a Apple product. So uh, I can see when I logged in as an alert, I can see when I requested a tour as an alert. However, I'm not gonna be able to see things like viewing a collection, but it shows up underneath my timeline. So when I'm in my timeline, I'm the agent, I'm now looking at my consumer version of myself's timeline, you can see that I have viewed collections, I have created a collection, right? Here's the created the collection the first time. And then as I started, if I added a second or a third or a fourth, you'd be able to see all of the properties that would be in this actual collection. So you can see what they're naming their collection and then, then add as they're adding properties to it, you would see all the properties included in the collection. You can also see that I created a saved search now, right now, the information on this saved search is rather basic, and yet I can click on it, and then I can see all of my saved searches that the consumer has created, right? You see, obviously, when I teach the class so often, I create a lot of saved searches. So right now, it is still pretty, pretty basic. You get the name of the saved search. Now, remember, this is what they called it. You get the price point that they're looking for and then the number of bedrooms. I've been told that we'll get additional information in the future, and yet right now, just kind of basic search criteria. Uh, if I had not actually added collections, you could see when I had actually viewed a listing per se. Uh, every time I viewed one of these, I added it to a collection, and so it turned into a viewed collection. Uh, but if I had not actually turned it into a collection, I'm looking for, there we go. This is what it would look like. So if I just viewed it, but didn't add it to a collection, you can see viewed listing, and then you can click on it and actually see the listing that the consumer is looking at. So remember, the only alert items right now are logged in, and created a tour. Okay? However, if you wanted to see, hey, who has been on my site or my app most recently? Like I got an hour to do lead follow-up today and I wanna follow up with people that have been using my app or my site. You would come into contacts and then click on last visited. 
When you sort by this column, then you can easily see who was most recently on your app or your page. And here I am, the consumer who was playing with the app, showing up when me as the agent's database, I could just click on my name. And again, I would see all the things that I had just done. And then I could call myself and have a conversation about real estate and be better informed with what I was doing as a consumer. Okay. Um, Kenny, no, there is no notification on download. However, if you want a list of who has downloaded your app, you can come into contacts. You're going to click on filters and here's the filters button, right? And then the bottom right filter is relatively new. It's called branded to me. You can select yes, apply, and then see all the people that have actually downloaded your app. So you can see, and a lot of these are kind of test accounts. Now these people, Donnie Berkman is actually a real person. He's a regional tech trainer in Florida that we were working on some things together. Chris Thomas is actually a friend of mine that actually downloaded my app, played, for, played with it for a little while. And then of course, Elena was my friend. Bruce Willis is just a test case with test. So this is an easy way for you to see who's downloaded it. And then more importantly, if you wanna know who's been on it, right? Download it is important, but to download it once and don't do anything with it, it's not as important. Click on last visited, it'll sort through your database of people who have been on it recently. Two schools of thoughts, and then I'll let you guys go. You have two ways of thinking about the consumer app when you're dealing with your consumer from the agent point of view. My recommendation is you tell them you can see it all. Okay, hey, this app is fantastic. It's gonna allow me insight to any time you're searching for a property. If you create some collections, uh, if you create a safe search, I'll know about it. It's really just a great way for me to get additional information about your home search so I can be better informed when it comes time to show homes, write contracts, et cetera. Um, so let them know, I can see everything you're doing. The other option is play dumb, right? So you're like, you haven't told them you could see everything they're doing and then you call them and say, hey, now obviously if you've told them about the video tour, then you're gonna know. But say they hadn't requested a tour. You could call and say, hey, I was in Cypress the other day, I was driving around the Fairfield neighborhood or uh, where Cypress Creek Lake neighborhood. I saw a property that I think you might really, really like. I remember during the buyer consult, you were looking for a four bedroom, three plus bathroom home with uh, a yard and I think this might be a really good one. It's actually at 19903 Virginia Falls Lane. They're like, oh my gosh, I actually looked at that this morning. I actually saved it to one of my collections. And you're like, wow, that's crazy. What a coincidence. Do you want to see it tonight or tomorrow? Right, so you can play the dumb route. And the route that I would not recommend is if you haven't told them you can see anything, everything, I would not call them out of the blue and say, hey, Looks like you were on your app last night at 2 a.m. looking at some properties. I guess you couldn't sleep, but do you want to go see any of those? Because I got some time on my hands, right? Like then they're like, wait a minute. You can see everything I'm doing on my phone at 2 in the morning. Like you don't want them to think that they, you can get into their phone and see what they're doing. Some people might get freaked out. Oh, now my credit cards are compromised. Oh, now my whatever, right? So um, just make sure you tell them that you can see what they're doing. I think that's a win. I think that's a value add when you talk to them about the power that our app has and how it can benefit both of you, both as consumer and as the agent. So that is the KW Consumer App class, guys. We talked about the different ways that you can use the app as a consumer. And again, guys, remember the majority of your consumers are gonna have a real estate app on their phone. Why would they use yours over the one they already have? So you're talking about the ability to search by landmark, which you cannot do in a lot of those apps. You're talking about the ability to research neighborhoods. You're talking about the ability to, to determine uh, commute times, school information, right? All of those different things that we kind of walk through. That's why I do the first half as consumer so that when you're talking to them, you're talking to them as a consumer. Hey, I actually use it to check out properties. Let me show you, here's some of the cool things it can do. And so then you can get them downloading your app. And then we talked about the version from the agent side. What can I see them doing? Why is it powerful for me to have them on the app? oh, wow, that's cool, all the things that I can see them doing while they're using the app. So if you guys have any questions, if you jumped on late, this was recorded. I'm gonna upload it to YouTube, send the video to your leadership team. Um, sometimes I talk a little fast, guys. I know that, it's one of my opportunities. So if you weren't able to follow along the entire time, you can always go back and watch the video and kind of pause it and then do and then pause and do and pause and do. Um, so uh, otherwise, that's the class. Any questions? You're welcome, Diana. You're welcome, Kenny. A real shameless plug, real quick. Uh, the RTT has created a project called paintitred.tech, paintitred.tech. So I'm actually gonna put it in the chat. 
there are businesses that have been uh, requested reviews in the South Texas region. And this week, oops, I just sent that to Diana directly. Sorry, Diana. Um, hangitred.tech. So if you go explore the site, uh, over the past two weeks, you were able to actually submit a business or more businesses for review. If you had your favorite business that you wanted everyone to review. So now we've actually put all those businesses onto the site. I would love it, guys, if you can do me a huge favor, go to paintitred.tech, click on the South Texas region, and then look at any of the Houston area businesses that you may have frequented. Go give them a Yelp review. Guys, right now, there are a lot of small business owners that are struggling. Like, they don't know if they're going to make it or not. And we all know their online presence can have a huge impact, a huge impact. So if you can go check out their Yelp pages and give them a review for any of the businesses you've frequented, I would really appreciate it. So paintitred.tech is that site. Um, Sandra, unfortunately, I actually have to jump on another Zoom. I'm booked back to back to back to back today, four in a row. Uh, but feel free to shoot me an email if you have questions, and hopefully I can answer them that way for you. Of course, you've got an amazing leadership team there, and Chad's an amazing tech coordinator, so uh, he might be able to help you a little bit quicker as well. So, guys, that's it. I'll send a link over to uh, Randy, Brandy, Tori, David, Miss Ann. Of course, why did I leave out your amazing coach, Ashley? Ashley, I'm sorry. I didn't list you any time we were talking about the leadership team, and you're an amazing coach. And of course, Karina, an amazing OP as well. So guys, take care. Have a great rest of your day. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll look forward to seeing you again in the future. Bye, guys.